Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So let's get back now to uh, this uh, piece of analysis I put on Tarpley.net. Obama is preparing to bomb Iran. And again, that's a shift that is not more of the same. That is a break with the last two and a half years, going back above all to that December 2007 National Intelligence Estimate. And back then they stated, and it's good to, uh, to record it uh, now, it said... We judge with high confidence that in fall 2003, Tehran halted its nuclear weapons program. So in December 2007, there was none. Now they're going to cook it. They're going to fix the facts and the intelligence around the policy, as we were told in that Downing Street memorandum by uh, Deerhart of MI6. They're going to be doing that. Key man, and this is Panetta, a, um, a political hack. Uh, when he appeared, uh, he gave his first interview in a very long time on ABC News. This was in the last week of June. He was asked, do you think sanctions will stop Iran from having nuclear weapons? Probably not, said Panetta. And he also indicated that they were cooking up a new NIE, which was going to uh, essentially reverse, revise an Orwellian exercise uh, to start saying now there is a uh, an Iranian program. Uh, June 8th, David Sanger, writing in the New York Times, says that U.S. diplomats at the United Nations are prepping the other members of the U.N. Security Council Permanent Five for the Orwellian reversal. Imagine U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice. She loves this kind of thing. The briefings say the U.S. is backing away from the old NIE, uh, going to reverse this, so get ready, uh, tell your government. And uh, <laughs> we're told by this guy, Gabriel Schoenfeld, arch-reactionary Hudson Institute neocon, Wall Street Journal, July 19th, this past week. Uh, essentially, we've got to get rid of this old NIE because it was politicized. For a neocon, politicized means anything that does not argue for immediate war. Objective means arguing for immediate war. Uh, and what he wants is interesting, the Schoenfeld. Uh, a neutral outside panel should be brought in to scrutinize the discredited, discredited 2007 NIE and the entire estimating process in this sensitive arena. Does that sound like an old neocon trick? It's one of the oldest. Team B, the 1975-76 exercise run by Bush the Elder, Read about that in my Bush, George Bush, the unauthorized biography of 1992. Buy it through tarpley.net. Uh, this was uh, Richard Pipes and a bunch of neocons, Richard Pearl, other warmongers, and they came up with this apocalyptic dissident uh, opinion about Soviet intentions. This time around, it's going to be uh, the opinion on Iran. Sir Richard Dearlove the boss of MI6 told Tony Blair in July 2002, quote, the intelligence and facts were being fixed around the policy by Bush Cheney, and now they're going to try it again. Now, one uh, Iran expert that uh, is uh, somewhat worthy of uh, serious consideration, Flint Leverett, his wife Judy Mann Leverett, ex-officials uh, of the G.W. Bush National Security Council, Leverett's opinion, there is no Iranian nuclear program. And that even seems to be the final word from Amiri, according to uh, Phil Giraldi of the uh, American conservative. Giraldi says that his CIA sources, who are, they got the inside dope, say that uh, Amiri's final opinion, to the, the, to the extent he knows anything at all about the program, he says there is none and you can follow in this essay that I've written the stuff about Amiri. Amiri was obviously getting paid by the CIA to be a new curveball, to be a new Ahmed Chalabi, to make these incendiary, exaggerated, apocalyptic charges against Iran. Uh, but he, uh, he then uh, ran away. So what are they going to say about him? They could, they could say, for example, that the 2007 NIE was based on lies told by Amiri. And now that they've discovered him as a double agent, they can reverse that, uh, that uh, NIE with a warmonger NIE. So you get the idea. So we've got uh, Panetta, 
aligning now with the war party. You've got Robert Gates, who used to be afraid of the meat grinder. He goes on, um, let's see, he goes on Fox News June 20th. Uh, it's, it's a wrong, he says, we should not talk about containing a nuclear Iran. In other words, deterrence will not work. This is a big issue because the military people say, yes, deterrence will work. MAD will work. Gates now says, we simply cannot accept the idea of Iran having nuclear weapons. We cannot have a nuclear weapons state in Iran. Now, naturally, the visit of Netanyahu to the White House uh, in the first week of July, the attempt to uh, have a rapprochement personally between Obama and Netanyahu after the acrimonious meeting is also a very bad sign. Look at what Flint Leverett uh, writes about this. Uh, Netanyahu obviously pressing for an attack. That's a constant. Uh, and now Netanyahu shifting to Obama the onus of you go first. Right? If anything, Obama would say to Netanyahu, you go first. Netanyahu's reply, you go first. Uh, and uh, it looks like Obama is the one who's getting politically weaker faster. In terms of the Gulf states calling for the attack, the ambassador of the United Arab Emirates, a certain Otaiba, speaking at the Aspen, Colorado Ideas Festival, the, the big idea seems to be genocide, uh, says we have to do a cost-benefit analysis. Uh, the basic thing for us, he says, is we cannot live with a nuclear Iran, and I'm willing to absorb whatever punishment that takes place in such a course of a war vis-a-vis the United Arab Emirates, right? Dubai, Abu Dhabi, these places across the Gulf. And that's big of him. He's sitting in Aspen. He's, and he's willing to fight to the last American, of course. This is very interesting. Fight to the last American for the UAE. And, of course, these people are feudal monsters. These are some of the most backward, horrendous regimes, right? Look, go back to my papers from uh, 1990 about the persistence of household slavery in uh, Saudi Arabia and these uh, Gulf states, uh, that's an eye-opener. Um, all kinds of allegations that de facto household slavery continues to exist. So this is what uh, Joe Klein points to. Spiegel Online also points to the fact that there's a chorus from Saudi Arabia, from the UAE, demanding the attack. And uh, one of the people celebrating this is this Bernard-Henri Lévy, the French Philosoph, I would call him a philodoxer, uh, not, a, not a lover of wisdom, but a lover of uh, wrong opinion. So Saudi Arabia as the springboard of the attack. Now, this goes beyond statements. We have all kinds of reports about Israeli and U.S. activity inside the kingdom of Saudi Arabia to prepare the attack. And we'll go with that in just a minute here on World Crisis Radio. 